I'll tell you one politician that I've not praised very often, and that's one-time Deputy Labor Leader and Cabinet Minister Tanya Plibersek. Look, she's always been a capable and prominent Labor advocate, but her politics have always been a bit far to the left for me, reflecting, I suppose, the very epitome of inner-city so-called elite Green Left values. So imagine when Tanya Plibersek turns up at a citizenship ceremony on Australia Day at the Sydney Opera House and says something as sensible as this. You'll be reciting the citizenship pledge shortly, and actually it's a pledge I love, because we're not, we're not committing to an abstract notion, to a crown. We are making a commitment to one another as Australians. From this time forward, I pledge my loyalty to Australia and its people. Not a crown, not a person, not a political party, to Australia and its people, whose democratic beliefs I share, whose rights and liberties I respect, whose laws I will uphold and obey. I think every Australian school student should learn that and think carefully about what it means. It is a really elegant expression of what it takes to be a good citizen and about the rights and responsibilities we hold as citizens. Well said, Tanya Plibersek. This is a terrific idea and one that, of course, would have mainstream acceptance. It's a unifying and sensible contribution made on the right day for such a suggestion. Over the weekend, I happened to chat to a few people who have immigrated to this country and they spoke to me glowingly about getting their citizenship and making that pledge. And it struck me then that those of us who are born here never get to actually outwardly make that commitment. We don't get the joy of that citizenship ceremony. So what a great idea there from Tanya Plibersek that we would at least learn about that pledge as kids at school, perhaps even learn to recite it. Australia, democracy, rights and liberties and the rule of law. Who could possibly object to that? Who could suggest that means anything but unity, tolerance and well-founded patriotism? The crazy lefties who usually support Plibersek, that's who. And didn't they turn on her with a vengeance yesterday? Celeste Little, a unionist who writes for the Eureka Street magazine, tweeted, in fact, I know I'm 41, but I'm now pondering having a child just so that that child can go to school and then also tell Plibersek to F off when told to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. She had a hashtag, F right off. Very mature stuff, isn't it? ABC and SBS host Julia Zemiro said there are dozens of other issues more important in education. Disappointing, retrograde, a low ebb. Well, I don't think Plibersek said this was the most important issue, but there you go. New South Wales Greens MP Maureen Faruqi said, How sad. Why not work to make students proud of our nation by taking a lead on justice for First Nations peoples, tackling climate crisis and inequality? Again, I don't think Tanya Plibersek was advocating abandoning any other issues. And another favourite ABC commentator, Jane Caro, brought in saying she was trying to work out what Tanya Plibersek and the AOLP think they're going to gain with their pledge thing. Those who like patriotic pledges won't buy it, and those that don't will edge a little closer to progressive independence or the Greens, starting to feel like an own goal. I love this stuff when people who are so out of touch politically that they get every issue and every election wrong, people like Jane Currow, then deign to offer their political advice to the left. It's as though they are coalition plants, I think, always giving Labor the worst possible advice, luring them further and further away from the mainstream. Plibersek, to her credit, hasn't backtracked. She's doubled down on her belief, her policy idea, her value statement. Good on her. She's having a break on the back bench at the moment. Any more outbreaks of common sense and mainstream values like this from Tanya Plibersek will see her being touted as a future Labor leader. Look, in a similar vein, the Green left seem to think that they have a mortgage on our public awards, whether they're literary awards, journalism awards, peace prizes or national honours. You name it, the left are used to getting their way with these things. And don't they just go nuts when someone who challenges their groupthink gets some recognition? That's exactly what's happened because Bettina Arndt 
the long-time sex therapist, counsellor and advocate for women's rights and more lately men's rights, was awarded a member of the Order of Australia yesterday for service to the community and advocacy for gender equity through advocacy for men. Former Australian of the Year, domestic violence crusader Rosie Batty went, well, she went a little batty, saying that my immediate response is one of utter incredulu in incredulity. I feel sickened. It makes me question the legitimacy of the award system in the entirety across the spectrum. This is horrible stuff. Another favourite ABC provocateur, Catherine Devaney, said, Congratulations, Bettina Arts, for your Australia Day's honour, recognising your services for being a boy suck. The intellectual heft of these attacks is something else, isn't it? An online petition has been started up on change.org to have Arndt stripped of her honour. Good luck with that. And let's leave the worst till last. It's from Mona Eltaway, who's been an ABC guest and we showed last week swearing about the patriarchy outside the White House in Washington. She took to Twitter to congratulate Bettina Arndt and referred to her advocacy for men as also known as bootlicker for White Supremacist Patriarchy Award. She then said commiserations to our own Rita Panahi, saying once again she lost out to a white girl. Racially obsessed, obsessed about the so-called patriarchy, abusive, juvenile, off they go. All because the National Awards dared to honour someone who doesn't bow to the green left or anti-men feminist narrative. I'll speak to Bettina Arndt later in the program.